the untold history of the plague doctors. Ever since the bubonic plague swept through Europe in the 1300s, people have been trying to find ways to protect themselves from this deadly disease. One of the most interesting solutions came during that period, the black-cloaked plague doctor. But who were they? What did they do? And why did we choose them as our iconic representation of plague-fighting doctors throughout history? Watch the video till the end to get the answers. But before we start, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new. And don't forget to press the bell icon to get notifications for all our new videos. With that being said, let's jump straight into the video. Plague doctors have become a part of history that is both fascinating and frightening. It was a time when death was an ever-present reality, and plague doctors were the brave individuals who would risk their own lives to try and help save those who had been afflicted. At that time, the plague disease named the Black Death had spread like wildfire across Europe and caused many deaths. When it came to treating the infected, plague doctors were often called upon. They were hired by cities to treat anyone infected with the plague, regardless of their social class or ability to pay. This was especially important for those who belonged to the lower classes who could not afford medical care. As such, plague doctors were tasked with providing medical care to all those in need. But what was so special about them? The most iconic aspect of plague doctors was undoubtedly the costume they wore. Unlike the doctors of today, plague doctors were not just anonymous figures hidden beneath a white lab coat. Instead, they were cloaked in a foreboding ensemble that sent a chill through the air. The costume usually consisted of an ankle-length overcoat, a wide-brimmed leather hat, gloves, boots, and a mask. The mask was the most eye-catching element of the costume and is often defined as a beak doctor due to its long curved shape. It was designed to cover the full face of the doctor with glass openings for the eyes and straps that kept the beak in front of the nose. Things were not as they seemed. The beak contained an array of aromatic items such as rose and carnations, camphor, and vinegar sponges. The herbs were held up against the nose to provide an extra layer of protection against bad smells. The wide-brimmed leather hat indicated the doctor's profession, and a wooden cane was used to point out areas needing attention. The long robe was made of a tightly woven material such as linen, which was believed to protect against germs and fleas that carried the plague. This robe was often sealed with wax or oil to provide an extra layer of protection, ensuring that the plague was not brought in through any openings in the material. The costume of the plague doctor has since become a symbol of fear and dread due to its association with death and disease. However, it is still used today as part of costume parties and theatrical performances, a testament to its popularity and longevity. Although the costume may not have been effective at protecting doctors from the plague, it is certainly an interesting and iconic part of history that deserves recognition. Now, you might be thinking, how did these individuals help in the fight against the plague? The truth is, there were no known cures for the Black Death at the time. However, plague doctors believed that the disease could be contained and treated using a combination of traditional therapies and preventative measures. Plague doctors used a variety of treatments to try and cure the infected ones. The most common method was bloodletting, in which doctors would attempt to restore the balance of humor in the body by removing blood. It might seem rudimentary by modern standards, but at the time it was thought to be an effective way of combating disease. Another method used by them was to place frogs, or even leeches, on the buboes which were the swollen lymph nodes that characterized the plague. The patients of these doctors also received advice on their conduct before they passed away. This advice usually varied depending on the patient, and doctors were expected to abide by a complex ethical code in their dealings with patients. The plague doctors also had to record the deaths of those infected as part of their job. This was done to determine the cause of death and how the plague had affected those it had infected. In cities such as Florence and Perugia, plague doctors were even asked to do autopsies on the corpses of those killed by the plague. When the contract was being signed, there were often many negotiations that took place to get the best possible deal for the city. For example, the city of Turin and Dr. Mileto had to negotiate about his payment and other terms that were included in the agreement. The city of Turin wanted to make sure that they were getting the best possible deal, but also not to lose out on hiring this plague doctor as it was a difficult task to find someone willing to take on such a dangerous job. In some towns, like Pavia, the agreement between the city and the plague doctor was more specific. 
the argument between the city and the plague doctor was more specific. The agreement between Giovanni de Ventura and the city of Pavia had 16 clauses, which were further amended after it was originally written. These changes were made to suit the needs of both parties, and included things like monthly payments, severance pay, attending plague patients, and citizenship. In other towns, the plague doctor's living expenses were taken care of by the city. For example, Bernardino di Francisco Rinaldi was hired as a doctor by the Florenta, was hired as the plague doctor by Volterra in 1527, and his contract had a clause that stated that the city had to provide him with all the necessary things he needed for his life support. The contracts between plague doctors and cities were often highly specific and had to be negotiated carefully for the benefits of both sides. The ultimate goal was to get the best possible deal while still taking on the dangerous job of treating those infected with the plague. The plague doctors of the Middle Ages were invaluable in our understanding of the Black Death. Without their dedication and hard work, we would not have the knowledge that we do today about this devastating disease. Despite their masks and long beaks, plague doctors had to negotiate with cities to get the best possible deal for themselves and their patients. Their long hours of work, their willingness to risk their lives in the fight against disease, and their detailed contracts attest to the courage and dedication of these brave individuals. So, this was all about the plague doctors of the Middle Ages. Despite their unorthodox methods and strange costumes, they were a crucial part of fighting the Black Death. If you enjoyed the video, give it a big thumbs up to show us some support. Also, let us know in the comments if you want to see more videos on similar topics. Goodbye!